I'm Re. welcome back to my channel, Mummy of Four Does Disney. Today's video is very exciting because I am sharing a trip announcement for Disney with you. So I'll be sharing all the details of exactly what we've booked, why we've booked it and how we're working it. It's a little bit different from the other Disney trip that we have planned. So before we jump into it, I just wanna say if you're new, I would love to have you as part of my Disney family. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified whenever I post new Disney content. I have got lots of Disney holiday planning coming up for you as well as all the vlogs. When we go, we are sailing on the Disney Magic at Sea this summer, which I've already shared lots of information about before, plus this upcoming trip, um, about to announce now. Disney hauls, Disney bounding and outfit ideas and loads more Disney fun. So if you've been following along my channel for a little while or my main channel, Mummy of Four, you'll know that I have been desperate to take my family to Disney for a really long time. We've been debating do we do Disney Florida or Disney Paris as our first Disney parks trip and then this big offer came out for Disney World Florida's 50th anniversary celebrations. So the main reason I've actually booked this trip now is by booking before the 3rd of August this year 2021 for next year 2022 there are loads of deals and offers on the website which save you loads and loads of money on your Disney holiday. So I am gonna go through exactly what the savings are in a second, but that is one of the reasons that I've booked this now. The second reason I've booked this, and I've actually booked it provisionally, and I'm gonna go into that, why it's provisional as well, for January 2022, which seems really soon, especially since we are only sailing on the Disney Magic at Sea in August. So ideally I wanted a bit of time between the trips just to save up a little bit of money, space it out a little bit more. But the reasons I've provisionally booked it for January, partly because the weather in January is at its coolest in Florida, and I'm not sure how well my children, especially my children with autism, are going to cope with the really, really warm heat in Florida, traipsing around the theme parks and things. And I thought our first big family trip to Disney might be better off in a cooler temperature. So I'm hoping I've made the right decision and January is a really good time to go. Let me know in the comments have you been to Florida? What time of year did you go? Have you been in January? And will the weather be nice? And by nice, I mean just on UK levels. Warm enough to not need coats and things, but not so hot that it's stifling. Another reason I've booked it for January is it's just before my nine-year-old William turns 10, and 10 seems to be the magic age in Disney where they're considered adults for paying for them at the very least. So the price would go up after his 10th birthday. And another reason that I wanted to book it for this coming January 2022 rather than leaving it any longer is because my eldest is doing his A-levels next year, and I don't know where he's going to be from September 2022, whether he's going to take a gap year, whether he's going to go straight to university, and whether he's going to want to come on any family holidays with us. So I really feel that this is one of our last opportunities, potentially, I mean, I'm keeping my fingers crossed he's going to want to still come on holiday with us, whatever he's doing, but I'm really worried this might be our last opportunity for this big family Disney trip all together that I've always dreamed of doing. So those are the reasons I've booked it for January. Now, I have not done a big announcement with the children. We're going on this date and a countdown and things for the cruise, it's sailing on a certain date. I did do a big yay children announcement. Go and check out that video. It's one of the favorite videos I've ever filmed. I've made over 400 videos on my main channel, but it was lovely seeing their reaction. However, this one, I feel like rather than we are going on this date, I feel like I have put a deposit on this date. And I feel that I have to have this different mindset with it for a few reasons. Partly because the Disney Magic is a UK staycation. So we're not having to deal with leaving the country and quarantining when we come back. It's all, although it's going out on the water. It's not going into international waters, it's only open to UK citizens. So I feel like it's more likely to be able to go ahead. I have pre-warned the children that with anything in life at the moment, it could be canceled, anything at all. School, going to the shops, going to see friends, a big holiday, whatever it could because of the dreaded C word could be canceled. Now I feel like with leaving the country, there's a lot more moving parts to this. Will we be allowed to leave our country? Will we will be allowed to go into America. There's a lot more that can go wrong and especially over the winter, are we gonna have second waves and more lockdowns and things? I mean, I sincerely hope not, but I feel less confident 
that it will definitely be able to go ahead as definite as anything can be at the moment. So I told the children that we have put a deposit on this date and we're hoping to go on that date and if we're not able to go on that date we can just move it. Disney have got a really good book with confidence policy where you can change your holiday around. I feel quite confident having watched lots of other Disney YouTubers who said that they had trips booked for back at the beginning of 2020, just when all the world went mad, that they have moved their trips. Some of them have moved them five times more even. So I feel like with this, we've got the money down on that date. So we've secured the price and the deals. I'm gonna go into all the deals in a second, they're so good. Plus exactly where we're planning to stay and all of that. So do keep watching. So I felt that we've secured the price. If we are able to go at that date before Williams 10, with all the deals and things that they're offering, but if the world goes mad again and we're not able to go, that's why I've, I'm very much, for myself as much as the children, not wanting to get too, too disappointed, we're not fixating on that particular date. We're just going to say, right, we've put that deposit down. If we can go then, fantastic. If not, we'll push it back. I mean, even the cruise isn't 100%. If one of us has some sort of temperature or something, we wouldn't be able to go. But again, with the Disney Magic at Sea cancellation policy, and I have got a big detailed video all about that, that if we're not able to go for COVID related reasons or because one of us isn't fully vaccinated, my husband at this stage has been fully vaccinated. I'm waiting for my second vaccine. So fingers crossed that soon, but we are able to have all of our money back if we can't sail for one of those reasons, or we're able to hopefully move the cruise to another date. Anyway, on to what I've actually booked. Now, one thing I will say, the dates varied so wildly when it came to price. So if you are pricing pricing up a Disney holiday, make sure you try different dates, flying on different days of the week, coming back on different days of the week. Also, sometimes there were direct flights available and sometimes there were indirect flights available, meaning we'd have to fly, get off a plane, get on a different plane. For our first long haul flight, and bear in mind, some of my children have never been on a plane before, but for our very first long haul flight with four children, two of which have autism, I didn't fancy the additional complications of indirect flights. Through all the jiggling around the dates, I did manage to find some dates that were direct flights at no additional cost but on certain dates especially in the height of summer direct flights were a lot more expensive than indirect flights we are flying with British Airways economy class just because that was the cheapest way I could get us there then I have booked what Disney refer to as a budget or economy resort I have booked the art of animation resort which looks gorgeous it's got an absolutely enormous pool it is the largest pool on the Disney resort the resort itself is based on the films The Little Mermaid The Lion King Finding Nemo and Cars so The Little Mermaid Room would have been my pick because that's my favorite of those films, but sadly that is not available in family suites that sleeps only up to four adults. But they have got family suites available for Cars, The Lion King, and Finding Nemo. So we've gone for a Lion King suite which sleeps six adults, so it should comfortably sleep myself, my husband, and my four children. The Art of Animation Resort is actually linked to lots of the other Disney parks via a cable car system called the Skyliner. And for parks that you can't reach via the Skyliner, they do have Disney bus transportation. So I simply booked that because it was an on-site resort. We figured that if we're traveling all that way, it would be a lot easier. We don't have to bother with renting a car or organizing where we're staying, seeing how far we are from the resort. I believe you get extra magic time generally. I'm not sure if you do at the moment because of the whole C word thing. Generally, when staying on site, you get a little bit of extra time in the parks. So you get to go in a little bit early. So fingers crossed we'll have that for staying on site. But we just thought that with it being potentially a complicated holiday with all of the children and some of them with additional needs that staying on site would be quite a sensible move. Now on to some of the deals which are the other reason I've booked now. Now some of these deals you have to book by the end of June in order to qualify for them but most of them are valid until the 3rd of August if you pay your deposit and book your holiday. So the big one is that they are offering a 14 day park pass and the park pass gets you into the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, the Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Disney Springs and the water parks. And they are offering that 14 day pass for the price of a seven day pass, which is massive. What a huge discount. They're also offering what they call magical extras, which are discounts on various other things. I'm not too sure about that. I need to look into that. So that's not one of the reasons that really excited me, but 
extra dining credit. That really, really was quite enticing. They're offering you, depending on which holiday you book, up to $900 of Disney dining credit, which is a lot. So for the particular holiday I've booked, we have qualified for $854 of Disney dining credit, which is fab. We're getting a $200 Disney gift card to spend in the shops on merchandise and things, as well as a 15% discount code for Shop Disney to buy things over here in the UK before we go. We're getting a celebration basket in our room, apparently, a memory maker, which is the photo pass, which means all the snaps that we have taken around the park we'll be able to have digital copies of, which means so much to me in order to capture those memories. Obviously, I've always got a camera in my hand with what I do for work, but I am not always in the picture, so it'll be quite nice for me to actually be involved in those pictures. Let me know, is it the same for you? Are you always the one behind the camera and never in the photos? And there's also a lot of Disney planning tools and emails and things included in that too. So I'm honestly so excited for this. I really hope the trip can go ahead as planned. Whether it will or not is another matter. There are a lot of moving parts, as I said. There are a lot of things that could go in different ways. We don't know exactly what's happening with our country and opening things up. And hopefully, you know, everything will stay under control and the world will return a lot more to normal, whatever that is, as soon as possible. But I am really trying not to get my hopes up too much and to manage the children's expectations that we are planning to go at this time. We will definitely go at some point, but whether it will be at this time or not is another matter. The other factor to consider, of course, is both myself and my husband are self-employed. So if the time's approaching to pay the balance and things aren't going as planned for myself or my husband, because being self-employed is a bit turbulent like that, then we've always got the option to move the trip to further back, which will give us a bit more time to pay it off. So I'm really excited to share all the planning for this with you. Let me know in the comments which videos you would like to see. I am planning on doing like a wish list of planning, what we're planning to do in each park, which rides we're excited for, which orders we're planning to do things in, lots of Disney outfit planning, lots of Disney packing, all that kind of thing. But if you've got any specific video requests, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a massive thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified whenever I upload new videos. There are more videos for you to choose all around me on the screen. Click one and enjoy. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.